the forces of evil have always searched for the hidden valley of Imraldis, or Rivendell as we know it. And today, a force of goblins led by Durbers, the Goblin King, has stumbled across the outskirts of Rivendell. Luckily, there is a force of defenders ready to respond. The Fellowship has left mere days ago, and Gloin is still in Rivendell. Him and Glorfindel have teamed up and have rallied a force of elves and dwarves to repel the attackers. This is reminiscent of the very first mission of the Battle for Middle-Earth video game. It came out all the way back in 2005 and it has been a massive inspiration for all of the work that I've done. If you haven't played it before, it's absolutely incredible. It's an RTS based in Middle-Earth. And the good side of the campaign sees Glorfindel and Gloin teaming up and going on a massive adventure together. My army for today is led by Glorfindel with the armor of Gondolin. With him, he's got some elven spear and shieldmen, as well as some elven archers. And then I have a dwarf king who's going to be representing Gloin. He's got a group of Khazad guard, some dwarven archers, and all importantly, a dwarven banner bearer. I think it would be a little bit more tactical to have the banner on an elf with a spear, but I think that my dwarven bannerman is too cool not to put on the table. Hey, my name's Daly. Uh, we've got a battle report today. I'm bringing some Moria. So we've got Groblog, we've got Durbers, uh, a Shaman, and a couple of cave trolls, and then just a bunch of boys. We have paid a premium for some Black Shield uh, warriors, which you don't often see. Yeah, it'll be cool to see them on the tabletop, and uh, especially the Shaman as well. I'm really looking forward to getting some great value out of that Shaman. Jacob's bringing uh, some Elves and Dwarves and Alliance. It'll be nice to get a, some hatred out of the Black Shields towards the towards the Dwarves, and we'll basically just have to hope that Glorfindel plays the way that Sean Rosado thinks he plays, and he just won't kill anything, probably will lose a bunch of fights. The scenery that we're playing on today is from the Kingdom of Noldreth Kickstarter campaign. You can get STL files of all the scenery that you see on this board over on that Kickstarter. All of this terrain has been designed by Wargamers, for Wargamers, and we have had an absolute ton of fun putting it together here at Conquest Creations. You can follow the link in the description down below to be taken to the pre-launch page and then I'll send you an email the moment it goes live. By backing out Kickstarter, you're supporting the channel and helping us make more videos just like this one. You can also get the STL file of this house completely for free right now. The link is in the description down below. And when the Kickstarter is running, you can get all of our previous kingdoms at a steep discount, as well as the Conquest Mega Bundle, which will have every single STL file that we have ever designed here at Conquest Creations. Today's scenario is domination. That means that there are five objectives scattered around the table. There's one in the center of the board, just on top of this bridge. The rest are placed by Daly and myself, 12 inches apart from each other. I went with one in the backwoods and then Daly put two in this tower because it's tall enough that they're not within 12 inches, meaning this tower is gonna to be worth a lot of points. The last one was placed in the Elven Barracks. Each objective is worth two points, and you also get one point for killing the enemy leader and one point for breaking the enemy. Board set up with this beautiful uh, Conquest Creations Elven terrain, which is looking absolutely fantastic. In Domination, it obviously plays such a, a crucial a crucial role. Um, we've ended up with a lot of the objectives on, on one side, which I managed to get. So we'll try and uh, defend the tower and, and maybe see what uh, what we can do to break through on the on the river and, and hold the bridge objective. All right, well, let's get into this game. And here we are at the start of the match. Daily, what are your thoughts going into this? I don't have a lot. I mean, I'm really just trying to channel pure goblin here, so we'll just be sending it and seeing what happens, really. There's a lot of goblins and some pretty big cave trolls there, which are definitely scary because they'll rip through my elves just as if they were anything else. But Glorfindel and Gloin are going to do their best. All right, Daily, good luck. Let's get into this. Turn one priority. Let's do it. Nice, good start. Okay, I mean, getting something different at home. Two, you can't get another two. There we go. All right, that's all yours. Uh, I won't be calling anything, so just straight into goblin movement. Shaman's just gonna do a heroic channel. Uh, we're gonna just two dice fury. Make sure we're passing courage tests, maybe uh, getting some fury saves. Let's see what we get. Two ones. Oh. <laughs> uh, so that does not cast. 
Beautiful. How glad are you that you brought that shaman? Really glad. That was a good 45 points. Uh, look, it's not, it's not a huge deal. It'd be nice to be able to just auto pin Glorfindel every turn because he does cause terror and obviously we are not the bravest of, uh, of creatures. Frowler number one is going to charge this Khazard guard. He'll throw a dagger on the way in and miss. And uh, this gentleman will charge the Dwarf King. He's going to charge the dude next to Glorfindel. Yep. Prowler will throw a dagger at one of these elves. Nope. So Cave Troll will charge these two over here. So it'd be funny to get a big hurl, but yeah, I guess. We're just goblins. We're just goblins and cave trolls. We don't really have the brain power for that sort of stuff. It's more of a see elf kill elf type situation. Now our troll is not at all hindered by the water here. So he's just gonna sidestep and move up there. Cause even if you're on this elevated platform, I'm big enough I can still fight you while you're there. With Daly's move done, that comes to my move. And I'm gonna start over here trying to go for this cave troll. And I had these two elves that were originally going for my back objective, but they're going to take courage tests because if I can just take it out early, that would be awesome. So the first one's gotten in. I'll make sure you're trapped in there. And then the next one has also gotten in. And I think it's worth just pulling. Oh, no, that spearman looks like he's trapped in there, so he's not going to be going that way. On this side, these dwarven archers are just going to move two and a half inches because I want to use some of their strength three shooting to hopefully start putting some damage out. The rest of my move was pretty straightforward, just clashing into the lines of goblins. That goes in the shooting phase where these three dwarven archers are gonna fire at the cave troll. I hit on fives and I wound on sixes. Two hits. I get blubber saves, right? Uh, you don't get any saves because I didn't do anything. First fight of the five phase, it's a cave troll fighting four elven archers. I've two handed on one of my dice and I've got a six. Nice. And I've seen these silver dice cuckling pretty hard on the channel so far. And that will continue. Yep, that's very unfortunate. Uh, now I did bring the hammer. I'm burly. I'm strength six. I'll be wounding you on threes. Uh, yeah, this is gonna really suck. So we'll go for one, two, three in that order, and get all three of them gone, please. That, uh, yeah, then uh, wasn't good. In that five phase, I managed to kill three goblins, and then in the very last, one of my Khazad guard went down, which was pretty sad, because aside from that, I would have come out pretty unscathed, aside from the cave troll annihilating three of my archers. So now I've taken four casualties to dailies three. It's not ideal. Well, I already went to the good side, daily. What are you gonna do about that? Uh, we're gonna call a move with Grobble up, because we got an opportunity to sort of keep you hemmed in uh, maybe set up some pearls and other chicanery with the with the cave trolls. Uh, so see if you want to count. Yeah, I have decided that I'll be countering with my dwarf king. Uh, so that's gonna go to the wall off. One, two, three goes evil. Four, five, six goes good. Whoa, nice. So your heroic move is not gonna get either cave troll, or is that second one caught? Uh, it does get the second one. We've charged in with what guys we could. We've unfortunately failed a few courage tests to kind of pin Glorfindel down. Thank you um, to my shaman. And yeah, everything else has just sort of gone in. One of the trolls has moved up and uh, I guess he'll be taking courage tests to pin down my other one. My move started with this elf charging into the back of the cave troll. I'm pretty worried about a massive hurl coming down this line here. So I just want to time up with someone who isn't, uh, you know, going to get hurled into me. I went to my flank next where it was a little bit of an awkward spot. Daily hadn't moved these guys yet because they weren't in the heroic. So I just pulled back and then I moved my archers up two inches to get some shots, knowing that Daily's probably gonna charge into me, but at least I'm not trapped. So Daily, Andy, your move, what happened with these goblin archers? So we got two that have made it to the second tier of the tower. So they're within striking distance um, up the top there. And then the shaman uh, is just gonna walk in to the ladder here. So he'll be on top of that objective and we might have some uh, some funny business. And at the end of the movement phase, this is the board. Any thoughts on your position, Daly? Yeah, it's all going to plan at the moment. We're running headlong into getting killed. So that's that's pretty much the dream. That's the goblin dream. That takes us into the shooting phase where my three dwarf archers are just firing up into the tower. There's only one goblin up there that they can see, but if I can kill him, that can start denying some VPs. All right, we're hitting on fives. 
And there are zero hits. So that was an exciting shooting phase. Beautiful. Seeking. So the first fight is going to be Glorfindel fighting a Black Shield and uh, two Spearmen. Yeah. It's all yours. That is mine. You don't have a banner. I'm going to go for the defense four guy first. Uh, I'll use my Lord of the West reroll. Uh, you're still alive. I'll go for him again. He's dead. And then I'll go for the defense six guy. He's also dead. Fantastic. You're pretty cool. I actually do think I'm kind of cool. So far, this fight phase is going really well for me. I've managed to take down a bunch of goblins and haven't taken any casualties. But we've still got a few to go, so we're coming over onto the flank. This flank didn't go as well. I lost a dwarf, but I followed that by killing a goblin. There's just two fights to go. It's both cave trolls. We're going to start with this one. I think I'm going to shield here. Cool. Best to me. You win on five value. So I'll push back an inch, or do you oh, want to do any brutal powers? Three no. Years. Just killing me. The last fight is another cave troll fighting an elf. Can this cave troll go for his fourth kill? I've set the bar on a five. You've got a six, just a single three to take that elf down. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. So you have killed uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven models, and six of them have been with cave trolls. Yeah, that adds up. Priority for this turn went to the good side, and I'm a little bit stuck, but I think I've, I've figured out a plan here. I'm going to send this Dwarf Archer to tie up these two, and this Dwarf Archer is going to take a Courage Test to tie up that Cave Troll. Uh, he's got it, because he's Courage 4 on the roll of a 6. He's just going to stand in there. Next, we'll continue charging, and then this Archer is going to run around the back and charge him, because I'd love to start getting models towards the tower to get to the objective. So over on this side, I've got a lot to do here. This guy's a guard is going to charge into these two spearmen, taking their control zones down. Next, this guy's going to come in here and take his control zone down, and then Glorfindel is going to go. He's going to charge this black shield and wrap to fight Derbers as well. And then I finished up my move just by tying up as many goblins as I can. Didn't have to, actually all that much to move, so archers have stood still. We'll take some shots at some uh, spear sports. Jacob's kindly left out for us. And then Groblog's just hopped over the bridge. Um, might have a sneaky attack on the banner coming up. We'll see what we can do. At the end of this move phase, this objective in my backfield inside the trees is still completely unattended. I was always planning on sending some of the elven archers down there, but trying to flash kill the cave troll was too appealing. So now it's all by itself, which could be a big problem for me later on if I want to win this game. Where are those archers? Uh, they are in Valinor now. <laughs> and in the shooting phase, all the goblins shot down into my elf spearman in the back, but he is still standing. That goes into the combat phase daily. Uh, you did roll Grolog's Crown, and it did go off successfully, so all the goblins within three and stuff can get plus one to their fight value. Any heroics? Uh, we're going to call a strike with Derbez against Glorfindel. Yeah, and you know what? I'm not going to counter. Uh, I don't have that much might in my army. I've only got four left, and that'll mean that you also have four left, which I kind of like. Uh, nothing else? No, that would be. Okay, because... At the moment, you did have this elf trapped. If Groblog called a heroic combat, that would make that go first, so he'd be trapped, and he'd be equal fight value with him. But he's chicken out. Could have threatened the banner. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's a lot to ask Groblog to <laughs> kill an elf and a dwarf in the same turn. Yeah. They both have, like, banner rerolls and stuff. Um, if I was going to do the heroic combat, it would probably be to try and get the crown to Derbez and get an extra uh, boost to the fight. But it just looks a little bit difficult. Over on the flank, I didn't lose any models and I got a kill, so that is progress, but I need to be moving towards the objective. Next up, this cave troll's just won his fight, but daily, you haven't rolled to wound yet. What's happening? Uh, we're just gonna barge. I just like to kill more than one guy if I can, so I'll probably just barge and lose the fight instead. Yep. Yeah, we're only gonna get into one again, but... It's fine. And that troll went on to kill an elf. Yeah, we'll take that. We got, you know, two of you backing up further and uh, and killed an elf instead of a dwarf, so that's that's decent. The next set of fights saw me killing a trapped prowler, and then I just pushed the goblins back. The fights in this area went pretty well. I managed to kill a few goblins and not take any casualties until the cave troll went. He barged my spearmen into the river, charged two more guys, and killed another elf. 
And it's the last fight of the turn. It's Glorfindel fighting Derbez with a friend. Yeah, it's out for Glorfindel to get smacked down. I'll do my strike. Yep. Not great. So you all fight four base. You go up to fight six because of that. Are you within three inches of Groblog at the moment? I don't think I could back away far enough. Unless we're like just not really measuring properly. <laughs> um, I'd rather measure properly. Uh, so I am currently high fight. Do you want to set the bar? Uh, sure. It is a six. All right. So three ones from you would be awesome. And then Lord of the Rest to like a four. There's a six. Um, he is your leader. So I think I'm just going to go everything on Derbez. Yeah, it makes sense. And I'll Lord of the West reroll this one. So I've done two wounds to him. You have two wounds and two fate. So you're going to have to start spending. So I only need to pass one, really. Do you want to use two might? Oh! Damn it! That's really good. Dead. And Derbez is slain in one turn. People say Glorfindel lacks hitting power, but um, you just got hit daily. How do you feel? Uh, you just got to fight weaklings, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the real yeah. strategy is just gang up on uh, shitty models. That Balrog that he killed was actually like a baby. And that's how we did it. Yeah, it was actually coming to him for like help and guidance. Yeah, and it's still like... He threw it into an abyss. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Priority this turn went evil, so I've decided to use Gloin, who's being played as a Dwarf King, to call a heroic move. Daly, are you going to counter that? Yeah, we'll counter with Grublog, uh, try and just get the the Border Patrol barricade back up. And at the moment, you are five models off breaking me, and I'm five models off breaking you. Sounds like a good turn of Cave Troll combat. So, it's nice and close. Uh, let's see the roll off. Four, five, six would be fantastic here if you could. Not enough. Can't do it. All right, that's all Groblog. Groblog moving first into that dwarf. Yeah, we've done our heroic moves. So basically just pretending Glorfindel doesn't exist, um, charged everything else around him. No point, you know, wasting models on courage tests and just standing still. So he can pretty much pick where he's going this turn, but we've set up some other stuff. That goes to my move and it's gonna start out with this one elf. He has a very important job. So he's going to move two inches to get out of the river. That's going to cost him four inches of movement. And then he's going to move two more inches. And he's going to be going the objective in the woods. With these guys, I need to get to that tower. We don't have a heap of time to get there and I'm pretty slow. So this guy's going to just charge in there. And this guy's going to charge up here as far as possible. And six inches will get the elf up to there. I had a long think about what Glorfindel's journey was going to be because he is fight seven, so he's really good at taking down these cave trolls. Uh, but he's just not in a good position to do that. He needs to be playing the objective, so I'm actually going to run and charge these two archers. that might have been left there as bait, but he's going for it. That takes us into the fight phase. I'm not declaring any heroics. What about you, Daly? Um, I am. So Groblog, his, his crown's gone off. We're fighting against a trapped guy, which puts him up to fight five. He's seen Derbers get absolutely stomped um so he's you know he's feeling he's feeling like it's time to put that crown on his head and we're calling a heroic combat all right get the boys behind us nice so we'll start there i'll set the bar for you with my cousin guard on a five that's all right but you've got a six nothing i can do about that because you're currently high fight uh, now i am d7 but i am trapped so the black shoulder will be on fives and grab log on sixes that. Yeah, that's uh, that's a few. Now, what do we do here? I mean, we could move up, trap an, trap an elf, and maybe do the same thing. We could try and like just snipe the dwarf king. That would be kind of funny. The next fight is going to be the dwarf king. That's a good way to start. All right, please don't do it. I have a yeah. banner reroll. Just make it oh. long. Nah, we love that. So you have one. I'm D8, so it's. Uh, sixes by fours for the regular goblin, sixes for Groblog, and fives by threes for the black shield, just to make things complicated. Okay, so you've done one wound with Groblog so far. One maybe. One maybe. Now you could use it, Groblog's last point of my to do two wounds, Timmy. Um... You got no my... Yeah, I mean, screw it, why not? Oh wait, I stabbed! I get to re that stab. One. Oh, there we go. So the stab means I've done two. You've done two wounds. Now I you. I rolled two wounds. I can't remember. 
Do we'll check the tapes. You know. So we check the tape. Firstly, Daly doesn't have a point of mind, and he only had. No, I said that. He, <laughs> you didn't say that. Um, but also, uh, you rolled just one one, but it was with the Grovelog dice, who then rolled that six. So it is a wound. Two wounds on the Dwarf King, who is of course Gloin. He's got a fate point, and he has passed it. So I am still alive. And you've chosen a troll to be the next fight. Yeah, might be able to knock the banner over. Uh, you've got a six and your fight six. What are you going to do? I think we'll do the help. All right. You'll also be prone in water, so you might drown. That's true, and I do have heavy dwarven armor. So how far do I go? Uh, Long way. I go two plus two, so I'm going four inches. Um, that's basically going to get me past that black shield, I think. Yeah. So he'll go there. All right, this elf. He's alive. The banner. He's alive. <laughs> you knocked that. Uh, this elf. He's alive. Your goblin. He actually wasn't in the fight. Uh, he might not be. Yep. So your black shield. Also alive. And all these models are knocked prone. My Khazad guard is prone in the shallow water, which means he will have to take a swim test at the start of his next move and he might drown. And also the banner is knocked prone, so it won't affect any other fights this turn. The next fight saw me killing a prowler. Then one of my Khazads was pushed back and the cave troll killed two more elves. They are 100% the MVPs. I'm up to 12 casualties. Uh, two more to break me. Over on the flank, we each killed one model, meaning I'm one off break daily. How far off break are you? Uh, we've still got Glorf and Umbrella, so... We do still yeah, have Glorf and a good change, very soon. All right. But how many... Did Glorf and kills them both you broken? No. Cool. Let's do Glorf and You want to set the bar for me? Yeah, a couple of sixes. A couple of still sixes. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, that's hey. what we want to see. Lord of the West reroll, though, and that's going to be a six. No, I wouldn't have thought that. Honestly, I would have taken a five and mitered that. <laughs> uh, six is to win me. Uh, uh, there's one. Uh, here's my leader. Fate... Yeah, safe. Got it. Party for this turn went to the good side, which is nice, but I'm gonna start by moving this dwarf. He's currently prone and in the water feature. So he has to take a swim test. On the roll of one or two, he will drown. Yep. That sucks. Uh, that will break me as well. That's hilarious. Way. In here, all my models that were prone stood up and charged in, and the Dwarf King charged back into Groblog. It's kind of a risky play and maybe a misuse of the fight six because he could be going for the cave trolls, but there was just too many guys in the way. And this one elf is running directly for that back objective because I don't really have many objectives and I kind of want to get victory points. It was tough to decide what to do with Glorfindel. Uh, I kind of want to go for the side objectives, but instead he's going to go for the middle. He's going to move up to here. This is less than half his height, so we can move up here. And then I'll charge these two goblin spearmen on the center objective. Over here, we're going to continue our fight to try to get to the back objective. How's that fight been going? Uh, really, very mediocre so far. But this elf, he can make it there. Yeah, I think he might get shot. Dan just finished up his move, charging in the remaining goblins, but he left some archers still. That takes us to the shooting phase. Daily, what are you doing? Uh, I'm just gonna miss four Goblin Archer shots on uh, this guy here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yep, cool. The next fight is the Dwarf King in here fighting against a bunch of guys. You wanna set the bar? Yeah, we'll try and get him out of here. It's a bad bar. It's not fantastic. I need a four. Please botch. Oh. Yes, please botch. Banner reroll. Botch, really bad. Oh, there's a four. Uh. I'm gonna start on the Black Shield because I wanna break you. Nope. No. no. The banner went next and he won his fight. I actually wanted him to lose, but then obviously not die so you can back away into safety. Cause now that troll is gonna come get me. I'll set the bar for you. Kazakh guards on a cox dice is on a five. You're on a five oh, as well? Yeah. First time we came trolls, I got a six, I think. Banner? I'm lucky. Now nah, we'll barge. Uh, barge distance. Cool. It's a two, that's far enough. Doink. Oh, it changed. Uh, we'll do that fight straight away cause that matters. Yep. This dice will be the banner. I'm on a three. I'm a six. Oh. All right. Uh, threes for both? Threes for both. I will be able to pass off my banner. Both dead. Both dead. So my bannerman is able to back up into base contact with this elf. The banner does die, but he's going to pass it off and it's going to turn into an elven banner. Next fight is Glorfindel. You want to set the bar? You got two spears. All right. Okay. good. There we go. I got it, and I need fours to kill them. 
There's one kill. I'll do a Lord of the West reroll. I'm going to do it. I'll spend a point of mine on that. Take them both out. The Cave Troll killed another Kazard. They are being so reliable this game. We've got three fights left. If I can kill one model, I will break daily. The Kazard failed. He uh, lost a fight and pushed back, but this guy's going to go next. Oh, no kill. He just pushes back. We've got one more. I'm going to Piercing Strike here because that's going to mean I win on fours. Sure. I've won the fight. It's a four to get the kill. Done. There's a six. Get him out of here. Broken. Party this turn went to daily. But I've decided I'm going to call a heroic move with Glorfindel. Daily has no mind, so he couldn't counter. Glorfindel's just going to charge this goblin. I wouldn't have counted anyway, after the wreck. Oh, that's good to know. Uh, he didn't get anyone on this side, but he does get my three remaining guys on this side. So my Dwarf King, who is my stand-in for Gloin, will be charging. Oh, he will be taking Kara's test, actually. Uh, he's all good. Uh, he'll be charging Groblog. The Bandit is going to go in the water, just make sure he is within three inches of that objective. And then this Kazan, who is prone, is going to stand up. And he's going to go two and a half which is maybe within three of that objective, but we'll find out. So yeah, they were both just as they fall, and it's all right. leap over. We did get a five. So if he'll be on that objective, he'll be just here. Fantastic. So both of them pass their courage test and because you got that five, you get plus one for Cave Dweller. That puts you within three inches of that objective. So that is a really big deal. It's pretty nice. So the Shaman in the tower, he failed his Fury cast. Can he pass a courage test though? Uh, seven, he can. All right. So he will stay where he is on the ladder. Yep. The stand fast does reach these guys. So one of them is then going to climb up to the top of the tower and sit on that objective. Beautiful. So that means that you currently hold the bottom objective and now the top objective because of that play. Very nice, isn't it? I uh, have to see it. Yeah, it's, it's not my favorite thing in the world. <clears throat> and now I think if I can just orchestrate... If you can orchestrate the end of the game, you just win. Uh, and you can't really orchestrate much because you, you just got to roll for it and see what happens. So the courage tests were going so well for you at the start. And then both cave trolls fled and then every goblin after that except for one fled. So how many models do you have left on the table here? Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if one dies, the game is over because you'll be caught it. Is that correct? Uh, that seems about right. I'm going to start with a courage test on this elf. He has passed, which is great. So that elf runs within three inches of that objective. And I've got one elf here that needs a courage test. He has passed, thankfully, and he is just going to move and capture that objective. These two dwarves passed and just charged into this goblin because I think I'm holding enough objectives now that if it ends, I should be fine to win. We have a shooting phase where Daly's got this archer here on the road firing at my elf. You've just rolled a six to hit. You need a six to wound and this seriously could determine the game. It is so close right now. Please don't do it. Oh. And that takes us into the final, most likely final combat phase. This is going to be very interesting. I'm not calling any heroics. None coming from you, I presume. So let's just start fighting. The combat phase started with my dwarves killing this goblin, which will quarter daily, meaning that it is the last turn of the game. My Bannerman was fighting the Black Shield, lost his fight, pushed back, and died. <laughs> I'll pass it back to the Khazard just because I like my Dwarf Banner Bearer model more. But that seriously might have determined the game, because now Glorfindel needs to kill this goblin, and that will be a two-all draw on that central objective. You want to set the bar for me? We will be shielding. Whoa, what are you shielding for? Because he doesn't have an, a hand with a weapon. <laughs> so all he's got oh, is a shield. Yeah, right. So it's completely... Uh, I, I, you could get leader wound here. There, okay. Uh, Glorfindel? Yep. I need a five to kill you. He's dead. Uh, that will be the end of the game. Let's count up scores. And at the end of the game, the final score tally is two points for me for holding this objective. The middle has two models of each army within three inches, so it is nothing. You get two points for this objective, two points for the top of the tower. The bottom of the tower is nothing. I've killed your leader for one point, 
and we're both broken for another point, which means it is 5-4 in favor of the Goblins. Good game, Daly. Yeah, good game, man. It was uh, it was pretty pretty down to the wire at the end there, but that was super close. We just managed to kind of spaz our way through. Yeah, goblin mode. <laughs> yeah, pull on. Yeah, it was a close one. It was a fun one. The cave trolls did some absolute carnage, um, so they'll be enjoying the spoils of victory tonight. Thank you for watching this video. That was the last video filmed in the original studio space. So I'm here in the new studio that's just been set up. We've got a little bit to go, but it's just been set up. If you wanna see a full in-depth tour, then check out the Patreon and make sure you click on the follow me page of our Kickstarter. Thanks for watching and until next time, have a good one.